it's me and my friend, um, little big guy, and he's tails. And I found a glitch. I am invisible. Where am I? Little Big Planet, a game series that's very important to me. I met a lot of cool dudes just by finding them in levels or diving into their pods. I don't really talk to them too much anymore, but I'm not gonna lie, I still talk to at least one of them. Anyways, people don't talk about the series too much anymore, and I'm sure there was a good reason for that. Nothing really bad happened to destroy most of the community or anything. I'm sure it's just that people got bored of making levels and moved on. Alright? Yeah, let's not get into that right now. If you've never heard of Little Big Planets, first off, what's, what's wrong, wrong with you? you? And second, it was a game released on both PlayStation 3 and PSP. The PlayStation 3 version launching in 2008, and the PSP version would later launch in 2009. But as a matter of fact, in October, it will actually be 10 years since the PS3 version launched, and that's kind of nuts, since I still remember the first commercial from when I was like 7. And if you didn't know, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I do like the second one a bit better, but today, I wanted to talk about the first entry in the series, which was Little Big Planet for PS3. I'll talk about the PSP titles, spin-offs, and other games in the series if you guys enjoy the video and want me to do more. But for now, let's talk about this amazing game. Little Big Planet was a very new idea to Sony at the time. Not only was it a 2D platformer, which Sony wasn't really known for, but the big focus of LBP was the community-created content. It wasn't common at the time, looking back, it's really cool. Especially since the content was shared online for thousands to play. Think of it as Sony's Mario Maker, five years before Mario Maker was even a concept. But Media Molecule, a video game development company based in UK, created Little Big Planet after Sony was impressed with what they showed off. They were so impressed that they purchased the exclusivity rights to the series not long after. That just shows you how much faith they actually had in the project. One example of them really trying to push the game was when they made a level for E3 2008 to not only show off what you can create in the game, but also to show off the strong game lineup that the PS3 already had, not to mention the amazing sales of each PlayStation console. And something we've seen before on PlayStation platforms, and only on PlayStation platforms, more than 1.5 million PS2s for a product in its ninth year on the market. In other words, we've sold in more than 5 billion units of hardware across the PlayStation family in the first six months of this calendar year, and again, that's just in the United States. And if you didn't know, around 2008, people started to throw shade at the PS3's bad game lineup in the library at the time. And yeah, at the time, Xbox 360 didn't have all of the exclusives. Well, looks like the, the tables have turned. But let's not get into that right now. I want to talk about Little Big Planet, the best game ever. On October 21st, 2008, Little Big Planet was launched in North America. I never picked up the game until 2011 because that's when I actually got my PlayStation 3. But I did play the PSP game in 2009, which is a really different version from the PS3 game. But again, I will talk about the PSP game some other time. The game was just so awesome when I first played it. The first levels I actually remember playing was a Angry Bird Bomb Survival of some sort, and a colorful Shark Survival level. Yeah, um, I've played those hundreds of times. Maybe thousands. But there were thousands of other awesome community levels I remember playing, and I had a ton of fun playing it with my family members and real life friends too. Aside from the community levels, there was a create mode, obviously, and there was also a story mode. My Moon was just the place you would go to create your own levels and publish them. You could also copy some of the community created levels if you wanted, which was one of the worst features in the Hubby P series. It honestly hurt the community a lot throughout the three games in the main series. There was a ton of people that would just copy, paste, erase, and repeat, and the cool levels, which is the main place to go to find popular and hot levels at the time, was just filled to the brim with either garbage or the same exact levels that were being published for years. And you would constantly see them all the time. This problem, again, like I said, sadly continued into the other games in the Little Big Planet series, but it was a lot worse in the second game. 
The one name I remember who was the most hated member of the community at the time was a Latin player. Not only did he repost these levels every single day, but he had multiple accounts to do so. And his copy levels plagued the community for years, but if you look enough, you will find some really unique and fun levels every once in a while. And those are probably the best times I had playing this game. If the endless amount of community levels were enough for you, then just head over to the great story mode the game had. A really cool thing about the levels in story mode was that they were all made inside of the create mode using only tools that other players were able to use. So if you really wanted to, you can actually recreate all of the story mode levels. The story mode had a lot of charm too, with all of its characters and different themed locations for all of the worlds. Such as the savannah or the gardens. And don't even get me started on acing every single level for a 100% completion. That basically means completing every level without dying, and I still need to do that. The story mode itself has a ton of replayability. There are so many collectibles that you could get, and all of the collectibles could be used in create mode to create your own levels. Even if you have all the collectibles in the game, you could also help your friend out with their collectibles and collect them for them! It's a lot of collecting! I remember wanting it when I first saw the commercial, but like I said, I didn't get a PS3 until much later. But I know when I got one, Little Big Planet had to be one of the first games I play on it. And if I had to sum up the game in one word, it would be imagination. If the copy feature wasn't a thing. Rated E for everyone. If fun didn't matter, Halloween costumes wouldn't come in adult sizes. And no food would be available on a stick. If fun didn't matter, bendy straws would stay straight. And parachutes would only be used in emergencies. If fun didn't matter, no guitars would be electric. But fun does matter. Little Big Planet, only on PlayStation 3. Hey guys, Blazing Victini here, and um, this video was a little bit different. It's not really TF2 related at all, and it's a reason for that. No, I didn't quit TF2 or anything. I'm, I'm still going to make Team Fortress 2 videos, but it's just not going to be the way it was before. I want to do something different with this channel, and I'm just going to do videos about video games that I played and videos about games that I want to play, stuff like that. If you like the format of the video, just tell me in the comments or tell me some things I could improve, like my editing, I don't know. But um, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll be making videos on different games, so just tell me in the comments some games you guys want to see. I'll check them out. If I have never played them before, then uh, I don't know. I'll play them, but... Uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys later.